Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel for episode 450, can you believe it? It's taken a long time to get here and uh, granted it's not one of those typical milestone episodes that I like to focus on, but something does feel a little bit special about episode 450 and that's why we're going to cover three things today. The first is my response to the BYOC challenge, which is bring your own custom. Anybody who's watched me for any length of time knows that I do enjoy doing custom work. Secondly, that's going to sort of lead us into how to customize part two tips, so to speak, where I'll sort of offer a little add-on to uh, an earlier video that I did, and we're going to review a product called Bondic, which is basically used um, in customizing, at least by me, but it can be used for a lot of things, and it was something that I'd never used before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, maybe you've never heard of it. Either way, we're going to cover those three things. My response, uh, a couple of extra tips to your customizing efforts, and we're going to review Bondic. All of that in the latest Got Ba True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe, stick around, have some fun here, and hey, it helps me out. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, Transformers, Collectors, NL, and me everywhere, and three things to cover today. The first is the BYOC challenge, and I think I was tagged by a few people there, and I thought about, well, what will I use for, for that challenge? I... If you look at kind of the catalog of, of videos here on the channel, you'll see a lot of them have the word custom in it because sometimes I've done minor custom work, sometimes major. Things like sculpting a face within the faceplate for Combiner Wars Computron or turning Generations Deluxe Class Nightbeat into a Headmaster using the Titan Master Nightbeat. Sometimes it's been something as simple as painting the gray hands blue on Power of the Prime's Beachcomber, or adding detailing on Robots in Disguise, what was his name, Steeljaw. But perhaps my two favorite up to this point that I've shown you guys would have to be my Titans Return Blur and my Titans Return Cop. Now, I've talked about them before, so I'm not going to go back and do those again. No, no, I'm going to bring you two new customs today. Now, they're like figures, they're molds that I have shown on the channel before, and I'll talk about that when the time comes, but they are not characters that I've shown on the channel before. So, they're going to kind of be my response to that bring your own custom challenge, and I'll talk about what I did with each of them, which sort of brings me to part two of this video, which will be the tips. Now, I did a whole uh, how to customize, kind of beginner basics uh, tutorial some time ago. This will be a little bit of an add-on to that, and a warning for one thing that you might try to do that you're definitely going to watch out for. I sort of intentionally took the risk of breaking something so that I could show you what that danger is and we're going to review uh, a product called Bondic that I came across and whether or not it was effective at fixing the break that I sort of intentionally did. I know that sounds sort of confusing but you'll understand what I mean when we get to it. Anyway, enough of me babbling on here in this little intro. Let's head over to the table and take a look at custom number one. But first and foremost, before we get to the three things that I want to talk about, <laughs> I just, like, I'm not going to give this its own review, so I figured, hey, why not mention it now? So I guess like it's three and a quarter. I'm talking about the... Alt Modes Hound here. Alt Modes is a little line that has a, a kind of a quick transformation and like super deformed heads. You know, it, it's it's weird. This little thing on the top, like it can it can fold down if you want it to, or it can fold up. Um, like you know, he rolls great. In terms of coloring, I guess he's like a, a nine. It's pretty much hound colors. Now, 
I think a lot of the detailing is based on his like classics release, like the little detailing on the, the front right there. And maybe a little bit from alternators because we have kind of roll bar things, I guess. Not roll bars, but like we have bars on the back part of the Jeep. The Jeep rolls well. Um, transformation. 10, actually. I love the little automatic way that this one works. Where you just pull the, the thing and now it's a body. But then we get to the like posability, playability, and articulation. Like That's like a, maybe a two. I guess technically he can sit down because the legs bend forward. But that's really for transformation. Um, he doesn't want to stand real well. But like if you find the right... Put that down. I'll, I'll do it. I, I promise. He can stand. It's just you gotta find the right, the exact right balance point for him to get him to stand. Uh, like it, it looks like a good hound, you know, nice, nice hound body, but that head is which is way too big. The mechanism is inside the head. Right now the Jeep is up there. It is what it is. I'll show you kind of how that works. Really what you're doing is the face goes up and the Jeep is up here. And really you're turning around now the body's in there and the Jeep is out and you turn it around and the body's out and the Jeep is in. You know, it, it is what it is. And this little tab on the top of the head is what pulls that. I, you know, I, I don't know what else to say about this. It's not for me. It, it, I guess it's cute, but like, is it good? You know, is it fun? Not really. It's just, it's a thing made of plastic that looks like a transformer. Okay, on to the three things that I do want to talk about. All right, and on to the actual topic of hand, which first and foremost is the BYOC challenge. I was tagged by Ninja Bill, who I think started the challenge, I think. Think. And he's done a lot of customs and he knows I've done a lot of customs over the years. And I was tagged by the TF Fan Geek. So like, I know those two for sure, so how could I say no, man? My understanding is that there are four basic rules. The custom must be an official Transformers release. So it can't be a third party. Uh, like the custom work I did on Hegemon wouldn't count here. It needs to be something that I did all by myself. I didn't have a grown-up's help with this, folks. I need to discuss the methods, which I usually do anyway when I show off a custom, a piece of custom work, and I need to tag at least three people. We'll, we'll worry about that bit of business after the fact. Now, anyone who knows me realizes I've shown off a lot of customs over the years here on the channel, starting right from uh, episode number two, with my custom challenge at Cybertron Hot Rod. Going through the Dinobots in episode, or sorry, the Constructicons. In episode four, I did uh, my classics Ramjet. Episode 29 was uh, a little bit of just a custom touch up that I did on Black Arachnia. And it was literally just a touch up. Something more extensive was the Dinobots that I kind of covered um, from episodes 65 right through to 71. They were the Age of Extinction ones that I customized and FOC Grimlock. I explained how I made uh, Optimus Prime's faceplate for the uh, Age of Extinction version and how to use the floor polish fix to kind of thicken ball joints. I've done that in episode 72. I've done my entire Best of Bruticus series ranging from episode 79 right through to episode 81. Um, by the way, in episode 81 I looked at Combiner Wars, my custom Combiner Wars, Blast Off, which was this guy. So this is a custom of a custom. And just very recently, I uh, looked at the Special Edition Combiner Wars Blast Off, 
and decide, hey, I'm going to use the shuttle as part of Bruticus and my Combaticon. So then what becomes of the jet version? Because the jet version really, like, had nowhere to go now. I didn't need two blast-offs. And I came up with an idea that sort of ties in with the whole siege line that's up and coming. You see, part of that line is going to be getting Micromasters. And one of the Micromaster sets is the Decepticon Airstrike Patrol, which I believe in Japan was an Autobot like air patrol. And the leader of that group is a character named Whisper. He's a Micromaster. Sometimes, or at least he's, I, I think, the leader of the Decepticon iteration here in North America of that group. I don't think he's the leader in the Japanese iteration. Kind of weird. He, he's a character that's in, like an Autobot on one side of the world and a Decepticon on the other. So how you interpret the character of Whisper is sort of up to you. I will call him a Decepticon just because I don't want to put an Autobot symbol over the chest there and I really didn't want to paint it over. But I think the mold is solid. Now Articulation is exactly the same as it always was. I mean, the head, it can go left and right and up and down. The arms, they still have full range of motion on the ball joints around and out. We still have bicep swivel. We still have 90 degrees at the elbow. We still have a waist swivel, legs forward, legs back, out, full splits out to the side. The wings can go forward and back. We have a knee to 90 degrees, we have a, a thigh swivel. So we have all of the exact same articulation that we always had. It's, I don't know, let's say, let's say a nine. It's pretty good articulation. He can still become a leg and he can still become uh, an arm if you want. Uh, I've kind of thought that perhaps uh, him now and maybe off-road and maybe Dreadwind and um, Blackwing, Darkwing, whatever you want to call them. Maybe they could be the limbs for Cyclonus? Maybe? Possibly? Uh, so he could still do the limb modes if you want, and he still, of course, does a plane. I'm not going to show the limb modes, but I will, in a few seconds here, show him in plane mode. Now, I looked at the mold in episode 81 when it was blast off. I also looked at it earlier than that in episode 38 when it was Quick Slinger or Slingshot, if you will. So I've looked at it twice. I don't, I don't see the reason to do it again because though those videos are kind of dated, of course, it, everything still holds true. I mean, to do the leg mode, you collapse the legs and you put the arms down by sides. Pretty easy. To do the arm mode, you keep them like this, you put the legs together, you kind of put the arms up over his head. Pretty easy. It's your typical Combiner Wars conversion. So, in terms of articulation, nine. In terms of transformation, it's pretty easy, nine. In terms of the paint, here's what I did. I used a gloss purple on his head and his kind of upper shoulders here and sort of down on his body here where I had some black. On the rest of his body, it was a mix of the brown plastic that he just is and custom black that I had already done. I used a gloss black on the rest of his body and using a toothpick, I applied red to his pink or lilac eye visor to look more like a Decepticon eye color. You really need to use something very small in the eyes, either a toothpick or a very, very fine brush because you're dealing with such a small area. But in the end, uh, you know, oh, and I used silver on his elbows. I used them on a couple of joints, friction joints, because the silver that I use is sort of watery and it takes a long time to dry, but once it's on a joint, it doesn't really rub off. The gloss paint, sometimes it's pretty durable, especially if you leave it long enough to dry well and it might not come off, but it is possible that it could wear off over time. The silver is unlikely to wear off, plus it sort of broke up the black a little bit on his elbows. But in robot mode, you know, he's a pretty, I guess, basic color mix. I did not do the detailing over on his wings. I left the silver and purple detailing that was always there on his wings just because, hey, why not? But you can see all the way around 
just how it is. By the way, you might say, wait, how did you get in around, for example, the Decepticon symbol on his tail fin? Well, do you remember I talked about that fine, fine paintbrush or a toothpick? There you go. That's how you do it. That is exactly how I do it anyway. You, you just, you need something fine there and you need patience with it. It is exactly what it is. I do not have a steady hand. If you're thinking, oh, you must have a really steady hand. No, I don't. No, I don't. Really bad hand-eye coordination. I, like, I, I li once I literally walked into a wall and I hit myself in the face before opening the, uh, like, I guess, vanity in the bathroom, you know, when your mirror opens um, and, like, bruised my face. Like, I'm clumsy, really clumsy. And... <laughs> I was able to do this. If I can, I promise you that you can. But here he, he is in his robot mode, all the exact same articulation that we've seen before. So that being said, without wasting time to actually show his conversion, because I don't need to do it, here he is in his plane mode. And you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you need to actually take the figures apart and you need to prime them all. And then you need to let the the, primer dry and then you can paint them over and granted that probably helps you to do certain details better some people will say you need to sand the entire figure over you need to wash it off because of all of the oils on it and those things aren't bad ideas i suppose i didn't do any of that with this guy i took a brush and i took gloss paint you don't need to do that and i can tell you now you don't need to spend 10 and 15 dollars on a little tiny jar of like modeler's paint yeah, that paint is great, it looks wonderful. You don't have to. None of the paint. I use the purple here, and I use the black here, and I use the silver here. And I promise you that none of them cost me any more than $1.79 Canadian. None of them. At all. And guess what? You leave them for a couple of days to dry and cure, and it's solid. You don't need to do all of that fancy stuff. You can, but you don't need to. Here is the plane. You know, it, it, it looks like a black plane with wing detailing. I love how this turned out as Whisper. I think that as a black plane, it looks so slick. Uh, I'm all about simplicity. I, I guess you could call me, put that wing down a bit. I guess you could call me a minimalist, so to speak. I, I'm all about keeping things simple and cost effective. I'm not saying that doing those other things is a bad idea. It's not. If anything, it's only gonna help you because if you sand something off, then the paint has something else, like more surface area to adhere to. It's simple math, simple physics. But a lot of times I find you don't need to do that and it stays fine. What I will say is this, if you're working with gloss paint, and the other option is that you could work with a matte paint and use a, like a clear coat finish. I do find that that is probably more challenging though because I've never used a clear coat because I've heard too many stories of it smearing the paint. I don't know if people don't leave it long enough to dry and cure properly or if it's just the way the chem chemical reaction works. I haven't really found a clear coat that works for me. But with gloss, I find that you kind of have that two in one. Like I said, that's what works for me. What I will say is this, when you sit down and you, you know, squirt out some glass and you start with your paintbrush and you start to put on that first layer, it's going to look terrible. It's going to look like just a few streaks. Uh, if you're using white, it might not even look like a few streaks. It might look pretty clear, to be honest with you. White is easily the hardest one to work with. Black is easily the easiest one to work with because black will pretty much cover right away. So use it sparingly, use very thin layers. In terms of colored paints, the lighter the color, the harder it is for it to cover. The darker the color, the easier it is for it to cover. Use thin layers, put it on, it'll look like garbage. You'll say, hey, this isn't covering, this looks terrible. Trust me, give it a few minutes, let it dry a little bit, put another layer on. Give that a few minutes, let it dry a little bit, put another layer on. You may end up like, I remember doing the purple on the forearms of Titan's Return Blitzwing, who I looked at in episode 326. And what I have off of 10 to 15 layers of purple gloss paint put on his forearms is nothing. When I started to put it on, 
it basically didn't cover and I was like, this is not gonna work. But it does, it does. You just have to be patient with it and keep doing layer upon layer with it. And when I say let it dry, I don't mean let it dry super hard, like just give it a few minutes. Just let it sort of start to dry a bit and then you can do another layer over. When you are to a point where you're like, I don't think anything else is gonna cover. I've let it dry, I've put so many layers on, I don't think it's gonna cover. Leave it. Wash off your brush, go away, come back the next day and see if there's still spots that aren't filled in with color. And then do another layer or two. That's what I did with this guy. The black pretty much, I, I, I did this guy kind of in the night. So I didn't have great light. I did the black and I thought it was after covering everything. I did the purple on his head and on his ear intakes. I was already after doing the silver on his face and the silver on his like waist piece uh, and the silver on his elbow joints like previously so like I knew that was fine. I put on a bunch of layers. I thought I had everything covered. The next day came and in the daylight I noticed okay I could still do with another layer of purple maybe two layers on his head. I could still do with touching up the black. Now when I started with the black, I expected because it's gloss that it wasn't going to cover very well. That was my experience. But the black absolutely covers. So you really can use it pretty sparingly. It should last you for a long time. If you're trying to do something in white, just as I did with the Titans Return Special Edition Repugnus, I done a little bit of white sort of on his abdomen section there. When I first done that section around, and on his hips by the way, uh, when I first done those sections around, they didn't cover at all. It just looked like, like sm maybe smeared a bit of white on both of those locations. It looked awful. So I let it dry a little bit and I applied another layer and so on and so on until I got the coverage I wanted and the desired look that I wanted. So the general rule of thumb is that gloss paint should be put on thin and in multiple layers with a few minutes of drying time in between layers. And the darker the color, the easier it is to cover. The lighter the color, the more layers you'll need and the harder it is to cover. Yes, to do a nice job, it takes a bit of time, but in the end, it looks really, really good. So that is custom number one, done and explained. I did this all by myself. Now we're gonna talk about custom number two that I have, which, um, by the way, I guess because of what I've talked about so far, that's sort of a part of my add-on to my customizing basics tutorial that I did back in episode 274. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think I might have done the Fall of Cybertron Jazz in that episode. And I showed off a bunch of customs there. By the way, I also looked at my 10 favorite customs. And in that episode uh, where I done that top 10 countdown, I like showed off a lot of my custom work that I had done up to that point. So I've sort of partially answered the BYOC challenge and I've sort of partially uh, done part two that I wanted to do here, which is uh, add on to my how to customize beginner basics tutorial. But it's not the main event, so to speak because I have another custom I'm going to show you and a specific thing that I want to talk about when it comes to customizing as well as a bit of a warning. So that's it for this guy. The overall score by the way because it was a 9-4 transformation, 9-4 conversion I think the paint apps now if you look at Whisper are, are nine and a half even though Whisper is a micro master and this guy's a deluxe. Like I don't know, it's a solid figure, it's still a solid figure, 9.25, it's a good figure. It's a good mold. By the way, some people that know that I've done this custom have said to me, hey, when we get the airstrike patrol in the siege line, what if Whisper's there? What are you gonna do then? Because you'll have two Whispers. I don't know, there was four members in the group, I'll just repaint the little MicroMaster Whisper into the colors of one of the other members of the group and I'll have a trio. This guy will lead them and then he'll have two little MicroMaster planes that he leads. Sounds like a plan to me, man. Sounds like a plan to me. Okay, on to custom number two, and the second part of my answer to the BYOC challenge. And it's gonna be none other than this guy. It is the Transformers Universe Deluxe Class Smokescreen. 
Now, I've wanted this guy for a long time, but other things kept taking priority over him. And I had Prowl a long time ago, and I got him around the time the Combiner Wars 1 came out, because I didn't feel like the Combiner Wars 1 really caught the essence of G1 Prowl, and that was my Prowl, though I think the Combiner Wars 1 did a decent job of catching the essence of how he looks in the comic books. But to me, it was that 80s version of Prowl that I wanted, and the best one was the Chug one. I looked at Prowl in episode six. Oh, so long ago. But everything that I did there stands true. I think at the time I tried to do his conversion without popping the door wings off. I don't think I succeeded. But I said, okay, I have Prowl. There are two more like him, Blue Streak and this guy. I'm going to have to get the same version because like the Seekers, you know, they share the same body type. Well, eventually I did find Blue Streak. I don't mean the Tisaka Tony KO, though I looked at that in episode 166. I don't mean the vintage G1 Blue Streak, though I looked at that in episode 297. No, I found and customized a universe version of Blue Streak. I got them for three bucks at uh, a local thrift store. I mean, how could I not take him? I looked at him in episode 310 a while ago, so that left me with only one. Well, I got another um, piece for a different figure that I'll be looking at soon. And that alt mode pound was pitched in the box, but from that same purchase, I also bought this guy and said, hey, why not? It was for a good price. I was having something come anyway. Why not, you know, kind of share the shipping, make life easy on myself. So I, I did it and I finally got him and I was so happy now that I had all three, but I was not happy with the paint job on him. And admittedly, the Japanese release is definitely more anima animation accurate, though I think the blue on that release is lighter than I think it should be, than I would like for it to be. So, of course, me being me and the perfectionist that I am, I wanted to do some custom work on this guy. And in vehicle mode here, it's pretty straightforward, mostly what I did. I used glass white down along the bottom and up by the hood. I did a bunch of layers. Because that's a very thin area, I used a toothpick a lot and a very fine tipped brush. I sort of dabbed on the white paint with the, with the toothpick and sort of smeared it along that edge with the brush. It took a bunch of coats and a lot of patience. I also, these back here are blue with like yellow up on top on the spoilers. I used a Tuscan red gloss paint for back here. It most closely matched the, I guess, color red that's used throughout. I didn't do anything to the doors on the side. You'll notice there's a little bit of blue here uh, that kind of, I guess, went over onto the white. That's a shame. That's nothing that I customized. That was me attempting to do something that I'll talk about later. Uh, I can't get that off, by the way, unfortunately. So it is a little flawed to the custom. Around the front, his front grill, I did white on the top and the bottom because it's supposed to be white there. And right along, though you probably can't see it, right along the very top edge of the bumper, there's a little thin streak of blue that goes along because it should be. And this is the other side. I, you know, it's, I did nothing on the back. I didn't have to. Though I could have put extra detailing here, I, there was no real need of it. Now, the one thing that you might notice is that my hood does not have the Tampograph 38 on it. At first, I tried to cover the Tampograph with paint, but it was either too dull, or it was too gloss, or it was too streaky, and I said, no, not happy with that. Not happy with that. So what did I do? A Tampograph, like any paint, can be removed. You can use rubbing alcohol if you're stuck. You can use acetone. Acetone, of course, being nail polish remover if you're stuck. Or, of course, if you have a little bit of paint thinner, you can use that. My advice would be 
to put a little bit like out into the cap and just dip a Q-tip in it. You're going to start rubbing and you're going to say, this isn't doing anything, this isn't taking any anything off. It is working chemically though you don't realize it. And you're going to have to keep rubbing. You're going to have to apply some force and some pressure. And you're going to have to keep rubbing and keep rubbing. Eventually, you'll sort of feel it. It'll almost feel like the Q-tip is dragging a bit. That's when it's starting to get into the paint. In this case, the black of the 38 started to come off first, very, very, very slowly. Then the black of the edging started to come off next, again, very slowly. Eventually, when that was largely gone, a little bit of the white started to give away. Here's the thing, I didn't use very much paint thinner at all. And I did use paint thinner on this one. Though, with Titan's Return Cup, I used rubbing alcohol. I didn't have to use very much of it. I went through about four or five Q-tips using both ends of the Q-tip. And I, I kept rubbing on it, I kept rubbing on it. And eventually, it came off. Now, you know, I was left with a little bit up at the top and a little bit down kind of by his head hinge area. And they were the hardest areas to get at, so they took the longest. All together though, to remove that tampo graph, took me maybe an hour. Maybe an hour. Now, here's the caveat to that, and here's what you should always do. You should, after you use something like you know, acetone or rubbing alcohol or, of course, paint thinner to remove some paint, you take your figure, you take him to the sink, you wash that thing off. Not just the area that you were rubbing, though that's an excellent idea, but anywhere where a little bit of that uh, chemical could have gotten, down on any joints, down on any other plastic, you wash him off. And I find the best way to wash them off is to run them underwater, uh, use some like dish liquid, uh, you know, run it underwater first and kind of rub it off. Use a little bit of dish liquid on, say, a uh, napkin or a cloth and like actually wipe it around and then run it underwater again and wash it off. Then dry it off. Then go and get some sort of a cleaning wipe, you know, a baby wipe or a cleaning wipe and clean it off again using the wipe. Clean off the area, clean off everywhere around the area, anywhere that you think you may have dripped some of the chemical, and then dry it off again. Maybe even run it under the water one more time. You want to make sure that you have that off so that it does not keep eating at the plastic. Well, me being me, and doing things kind of crazy for you guys, I got a little lax when it came to the cleaning. I cleaned off the hood and his, and his arms and the ball joints and everything else. I did not clean off the sockets on the door wings around the ball joints. And sure enough, an hour or so later, I had developed stress marks in those sockets around the door wing uh, ball joint. Perhaps on this figure, the absolute worst place that you could possibly develop stress marks and cracks because if you break that socket, that's it. Those doors come off and they're useless to you now. So I protected the figure and thought to myself, look, if I ruin the doors, that'll stink. But if worse comes to worse, the day will come out get another figure. I'll take the doors off that, put it on this one that's already customized. Or, or I could use this as an opportunity. An opportunity to review a product that I've never used before and to show you a way to fix uh, issues of cracking and stressing that you might have on your own figures. And hey, if it works on these door ball joints that are notorious for coming off anyway, then it'll probably be able to work on mostly anything. So, my answer to the BYOC challenge was my custom whisper and my custom smoke screen. I hope I've explained the steps I went through to customize both of them. My add-on to the kind of how to customize, beginner basics, I guess part two, is how gloss paint should be applied and 
how darker colors cover better than lighter colors, and how you can remove tampographs. Sometimes people want to remove Autobot symbols or Decepticon symbols. They're tampographed on. Same process. Q-tip, bit of acetone or paint thinner or rubbing alcohol, a lot of elbow grease and patience. Then thoroughly wash the area. Especially when it comes to clear plastic. It's not as bad on colored plastic or, you know, something that's a little more solid, but clear plastic is kind of known for being brittle. Anyway, so that's kind of part one and part two that I wanted to do in this video covered, except we haven't looked at him in robot mode yet. Because I've already reviewed Prowl and went from one mode to the other there, and reviewed Blue Streak and went from one mode to the other there, just like with Whisper, I'm not going to show the conversion here. I don't need to. I will say this. The articulation is really effective on the guy. Oh, and he rolls tremendously well, and we still store his blaster up underneath. Uh, the articulation is tremendously well. I'm Honestly, it's like a 9.5. There's very little I could want extra for this mold, if anything. Maybe ankle tilt, maybe. But it's definitely a 9.5, if not a 10. It's excellent. The uh, conversion, about a 7.5. It can be tricky at parts, especially going from robot to vehicle. That's definitely the trickiest. Going from vehicle to robot, not so bad. And last but not least, um, his paint, it, straight up, it was out of package, maybe about an eight. Like you knew that it was smoke screen, even though it wasn't perfect. Now, I don't think there's anything else I could do here. Certain like molding choices still make him a little bit stylized, but I'd say it's easily now a, a good nine. Overall score for this guy, whereas Whisper's a 9.25, overall score for this guy, it's about, it's about an 8.25. It's a good figure. It is, it's a good figure. It's really not one for little kids. I don't think they're gonna enjoy it. But I think that currently anyway, who knows what the future holds, but currently anyway, this is still the going standard for a G1 updated representation of this character. Some people might say, hey, the Combiner Wars one is, that doesn't have the door wings and that doesn't sit right with me. Nevertheless, here he is one last time in vehicle mode and here he is in his glorious robot mode. And I absolutely love this. I put blue on his neck piece. I put blue on his shoulders. Um, it was a thin blue that I had. It came actually from a paint pen, though I applied it with a uh, small brush. And I put glass black on his forearms. And I put glass black on his hip section there because there was yellow on it. This is a G1 smokescreen in the right shade of colors as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, to each their own. And you'll notice his door wings are still on. Now, though I didn't show the conversion here, I will say this. His door wings did not pop off. They did not at all pop off. This is the only version of this mold that I have that I've managed to convert. Now, they do pop off sometimes. But this time, they did not. This is the only version of this mold that I have where I can say the door wings have not popped off. They like to do it on the other ones. It's still pretty secure, but they like to do it on the other ones. This is him in robot mode. I think it looks fantastic. Now we get to part three, where we review uh, the product called Bondic. In order to answer what Bondic is, I need to sort of give you the setup first. Like I said, I wanted to show off two new customs in response to the BYOC challenge. And it's the two that I've shown you, Whisper and this guy, Smokescreen. I wanted to talk about things that, you know, uh, customizers or potential customizers, people certainly beginning in it, uh, might like to know information that could be useful to them. And I saw an opportunity, like I said, to sort of leave the paint thinner on here, let it actually work on the plastic just a little bit. Like I said, it was about an hour, and I already developed stress marks then, so that lets you know if you don't clean it off that it's gonna crumble. And I washed the plastic off at that point. 
But it was too late, I had already developed the stress marks. So I thought about what options could I use to fix cracked plastic because it hadn't fallen apart yet. So my concern was, hey, I want to fill in the cracks, I want to make the plastic stronger, I want to solidify the area. And the very first thing that came to mind to try was super glue or, you know, some sort of plastic glue of that nature. And I put on the glue and I kind of smeared it on the outside of the, the socket and the inside. And I could put the doors on, but as soon as I would sort of stress the plastic to get it over the ball joint, the glue would crack. Because that glue, while it's strong and it holds, it really doesn't have any give. Okay, fine. Maybe I should put it on over the ball joint and then just apply some of the glue to the outside. Okay, that's fine as well. Tried that, I let it dry. Went to convert him, and of course, as the ball joints usually like to do here, it popped off and my stress marks were back again because the cracks came back again. Again, the glue sort of cracked on me. So I sanded all that glue off and said, okay, that's not going to be what I need to do. So then I thought about welding the plastic, basically, or using an epoxy. And that seems to take a long time to, to cure and to dry. 24 to 72 hours. Three days before you know if it worked. It's probably a good idea, but I don't have that kind of time or patience. I thought about using some other strong types of glue, but in a lot of those cases it said you have to hold the piece, the pieces together. This isn't really a case where you can hold pieces together. So what do you do? How do you solidify those sockets when all of that has sort of failed you? Well, enter the option of building the plastic, which in essence is kind of what plastic welding is. And I looked at ways to do the epoxy and the plastic welding. Not only does it take a long time to cure, but in certain cases, it, it, you know, you have to use like a couple of, I guess, syringes that, you know, have this like liquid in them and then this activator, or you can also use acetone and melt spare plastic. I don't know if you have spare plastic kicking around, but melt spare plastic in it, pour out the acetone the next day that hasn't already sort of evaporated or whatever, use the sort of plasticky paste that's there and basically kind of paint over the area. Okay, fine. That seems like it's open to... Unless you know what you're doing, I think a beginner would potentially mess that up and potentially mess up their figure in the process. Then enters the idea of this Bondic stuff, which well, it makes a lot of big claims and I didn't know if it would, you know, live up to the hype or not. So, what exactly is this Bondic stuff? Now that we know that the glue has failed and that some of the other options, though excellent, and I'm sure that there are people out there well experienced with it, modelers and people that kind of work in industries that have the proper tools, would be able to do things like use the epoxy really well. What did the rest of us do? Those of us that kind of don't have that knowledge and that skill set. Well, let's get this guy out of it and actually take a look at what you get when you, you get this bonding stuff. And what you basically get is this attractive little metal case. And inside the metal case, when you open it up, you have this pen thing. Now I'll take it out of the little foam insert. It's a beautiful little foam insert. We can get rid of the packaging. And so we have this, which actually separates into two pieces. This piece right here, still in my hand, is, we'll call it the applicator. And it's pretty simple what you do. You remove the cap, and you have a little, like, needle at the top here. And that little needle has in it, I actually got a little bit on my finger there at the moment. That little needle has in it what's called liquid plastic. And the liquid plastic is not going to dry. You squeeze it and a little bead comes out. It is fairly thick. You're not gonna make a mess with it like you do with glue. It goes on the area that you apply it. 
in a thin bead. You shouldn't have it any more than about a millimeter thick. And it's suggested that you put layer on top of layer. I'll talk about that in a moment. But after you have your layer applied, which only takes a few seconds, I mean, it's just like applying a little layer of glue, except that it works nicer. You use the other part, which is this thing. Now you can use your thumb and forefinger to squeeze on the center right here and a little LED light comes on. Like that. It is a UV light. So it is suggested, not only suggested, but it's told that this could irritate your skin, this could irritate your eyes and cause damage. You should stay about 25 centimeters away from it. Do not look directly into it. Probably a good idea to wear sunglasses. When you let it go, of course, the light goes off, or you can leave it on continuous with this little switch here. But here's the thing. After you apply the bead of liquid plastic, you only need to shine this on for like five or six seconds to dry it. And it dries hard. And then you can paint it, you can mold it, you can sculpt it, you can add a new layer to it, you can sand it, whatever. Now, here's the basic process. You are really going to want all of these tools. This is an old nail file. You'll want a little bit of sandpaper or a file of some sort. By the way, the very first step you do is you take the plastic that you want to repair and you sand the edge of it just a little bit, just to rough it up a little bit. It creates more surface area for the Bondec to adhere to chemically. The Bondec is not a glue. It says that. It says it doesn't work like a glue. If you don't rough up the area and you just apply the Bondec, what's going to happen is the bondic will kind of break off of the area. The area will still be the way it was and the bondic will come off in one solid piece because it won't be after chemically bonding. That's why you need to rough up the edge. Then you apply the bead of bondic, you dry it with the UV light, and then you use a crafting knife to cut off any excess you have. And if you want to apply another layer, you sand down the bondic that you just put on. You apply another layer, you use the light to dry it, you cut excess off, you sand that down if you want to apply a third layer. A layer should be no more than about a millimeter thick, so you're putting on very thin layers. At first, you feel a little bit ridiculous doing it because you will kind of think to yourself, this isn't really doing anything. If you don't sand it, it's going to come off and not work for you. You need to do the sanding step for sure. You need to stay away from the UV light to protect your eyes and your skin. This is not custom work to be done by a kid. This is custom work to be done by an adult. You don't have to be experienced with it. I wasn't. But you do need to have enough sense to follow the directions specifically. I have heard of this being used to fix broken earpieces on glasses to fix the leg on a table, to uh, make a thread for a screw to go into. I've heard it used for so many things. I've heard it used on wood, I've heard it used on glass, ceramic, I've heard it used on plastic, of course, because it creates new plastic and a new seal. It is a very secure uh, connection when it's done. The reason that you would sand down the area, like I said, is to give extra surface area. The reason you sand down the first layer of Bondic is so that the second layer of Bondic adheres to the first layer of Bondic. Then the third layer would adhere to the second layer. And they kind of chemically link up. I don't know the chemistry behind it. I'm just a geek with a camera. But they do chemically link up and in the end you do get a solid bond. It takes mere seconds to cure it because the four or five or six seconds that you use the light is all it needs. Then it's rock solid. Here's the funny part. The liquid plastic will not dry unless it is hit with the light. It'll just stay wet. Weird. And it specifically says in the directions that the only spots that will cure and dry is what's hit with the light. So then that brings us right back to this guy and the door wing issue. As many people who know this mold know by now, and I'll take this down. We have a couple of little armatures here on the back, and those armatures go to little, you know, end in little ball joints. And those ball joints go over uh, little sockets that are on the door. I don't know if I can show this now or not, but I'm certainly going to try to. The socket that I'm talking about is right there. 
It was cracked severely on both sides. I put several layers of Bondic around it. Now you can still see, especially down underneath, like kind of the yellowy color. Bondic is basically clear, but it does have a little tinge on it. Now I could cut that excess off. I could try and sand it off. I could make this ball joint look nicer than it is, but where it's behind the door, I kind of don't care as long as it does the job of holding secure. But you can shape it and cut it and mold it as you see fit, and you can paint it. Now, this allows me to move the door up, down, in and out, and it stays on the ball joint like it is intended to do. So. How am I going to grade this? Because obviously we can't do it the way that we normally do it. First, by cost. It, in Canada, costs about 20 bucks, which might seem steep for what it is, but if it does the job that it claims to do, it's well worth it. Ease of use. That's how we're gonna start. Ease of use, 10. It is easy and clean to use. Uh, learning curve. I tried it once without the sanding and cracked the piece, like, you know, cracked the whole piece of Bondic off, sure enough, as I suspected, and then I sanded it and it worked fine. So, learning curve, again, maybe a nine, like it's pretty easy to learn. So we have a 10 for ease of use, a nine for the learning curve. Effectiveness, based on my experience so far, and the fact that if I feel like I wanna add more, I can at any time. I'm gonna say ease of use, or sorry, I'm gonna say effectiveness. Again, at this point, an easy nine, nine and a half, no doubt. And last but not least, ability to shape it, mold it, and customize it. 10, you can do anything to it that you can do to regular plastic. I think that this stuff is an absolute success. When I used the kind of tried and true methods of thickening the ball joint and putting glue to sort of solidify the cracks and stuff that existed, I still felt like the doors were held on there very precariously and were probably going to break at any time. When I used the Bondic, yes, okay, I had to do a couple of trial and error sections with it, but when I used it correctly, now I feel like the doors are as as secure as the doors on the actual molded pieces. Might not look quite as pretty because I haven't cleaned it up, you know, perfectly. It's hidden. What do I care? As long as it does the job, right? My point is this. If I'm to the point now where I can actually lift this figure up by his doors and the doors stay on and support the weight, if I feel like I can move the door wings up and down, and I can convert him without them coming off, I would call this stuff an absolute success. If you try to glue something and the glue don't work for you, don't automatically give up on it and say, hey, I need to throw this in the garbage. Perhaps this product would work for you, maybe. In my experience, I, I, I would give it a strong recommend. Uh, you know, try glue, try what you know first. If that doesn't work or you still feel like, eh, it's kind of precarious. Maybe building the plastic up is a good idea, and if it works on the socket of a ball joint, which has to be one of the most difficult, oddly shaped areas to work around, I figure it'll work nicely for almost anything else. Anyway, let me know if you know about this product or not, because I'd, I'd love to know if anybody else has an experience, good or bad, with this. Uh, yeah, so, there are my customs. Uh, I do give a recommend to Bondic to try. Uh, I, I think it's I think it's a great alternative. And that brings me to the recommendations that I have to give for the bring your own challenge or bring your own custom challenge. So who am I going to ask to do this? Uh, let's throw out what names can we throw out here? I'm going to say Master Far because I know that he has a lot of customs and some nice work that he's done. Let's throw it out to Q's Reviews. Why not? Why not throw it out to, to Q, good friend of the channel? I'd love to know if he has anything that he has painted or molded or put stickers on or whatever. Anything that, you know, you've done to an official figure, if you even have an official figure, that you've done to 
add to it. And last but not least, let's throw it out to eBeforeI video reviews. And last but not least, I'll give it to a fourth one as well. Let's throw it out to uh, Transformers Combiner Couple. Why not? Why not see what any of them or all of them have that they could kind of throw our way for this challenge. So there you go. So in the end, I did what I set out to do. I responded to the whole BYOC challenge and tagged people to continue it. I talked about the things I wanted to talk about with customizing. I can highly recommend Bondic. It's a really interesting substance, product, whatever you want to call it. Great for customizers. And last but not least, because I'm not really counting the alt mode hound, last but not least, I am doing what I'm doing here right now, which is really just kind of setting something up so that I can get something to use as a thumbnail. Yeah, that's the whole point of this little setup here. But I, I you know, I hope both of these uh, were interesting. I hope that some of what I said was kind of informative along the way. And lo and behold, here we are again. And what can I say? I think that the slingshot slash jet blast off mold is kind of fantastic for the character of Whisper. Whether you want him to be represented as an Autobot or a Decepticon is up to you. If you want him as an Autobot, hey, cover that Decepticon symbol on the chest. It's as simple as that. And all that I did there, of course, was gloss paint. Like I said, you're definitely going to want to have time to dry. And I did put silver on the, the like elbow joints. I, you could do black. It's just that sometimes... That paint is thicker than silver. I always find silver, at least my silver, is a, a little bit almost watery. It takes a long time to, to dry, but it's so very thin that it's unlikely to sort of rub off as you use the joint, as I mentioned. And of course, then we came to my, I guess, G1 chug uh, smoke screen. And I love the way that it turned out. It was a lot of work that went into it. Getting that tampo off the hood was brutal. Like the process sounds easy enough, but it does take a lot of elbow grease and a lot of rubbing. And of course the danger is that when you wash off your figure, you don't get all of the uh, rubbing alcohol off or all of the paint thinner off or whatever you use, acetone. Um, you have to get that off or it's going to continue to eat at the plastic, as it did on those ball joints on the doors. But then we get to Bondic. I had tried, of course, with the glue and whatnot, like I said, but Perhaps what I really needed was to actually build the plastic up. And if you follow the uh, directions very specifically, and you do the sand, and you do the steps that are required, it's a fix that you can do relatively quickly. You don't have to wait for a bunch of drying time. You can keep building on it. Even now, I don't know, maybe I'll still build on it, but you could see that I had him in both modes. I have converted him back and forth a few times, and. The stuff is super strong. It's great. In terms of quality, no, it's not a glue. It's a little more complicated than that, but when I say complicated, I mean chemically complicated. For use, it's actually a lot easier and a lot cleaner than glue. I totally dig the stuff. You do need to sand it down. You do need to have patience. You do need to build layer upon layer and keep sanding down each layer. But in the end, I think you'll kind of wind up with something that's really great and really solid. I feel like those doors are really secure. It's certainly worth trying. Hey, check it out. Again, this is one of those times where we're here at the end and some people are going to say, hey, you know, some of the things you did like, I, I'm not, I can't do that. Yes, you can. If I can do it, I promise you, you can do it. I do not have good hand-eye coordination at all really bad. Like, I've never been able to hit a baseball in my life. Badminton birdie, forget about it. But yet, I can do this stuff. So if you've hit a baseball, then yeah, you have the skill to do this. I believe in you. Anyway, let me know what you think about the things that we've covered and discussed here today. You know I love to hear from you guys. Thanks for giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I know how important it is to you, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together and have another visit. And we have some interesting things coming up, by the way, including some customs, 
of some older figures. One pretty extensive. But I do look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the videos.